you are on the platform. I'm Sean Plunkett. Well, we've covered off Labor's still growing, snowballing, bullying scandal. Now let's talk about the latest piece of propaganda that you have paid for through the Public Interest Journalism Fund, administered, I always laugh and say, independently by New Zealand On Air, which of course is stacked with Labor lovies and Labor, Labor allies. Um, stuff has just released a thing called a circuit documentary with much fanfare all over social media. The thing is called Fire and Fury. Fire and Fury is the name of this half hour or so documentary made by Paula Penfold and Terence Taylor. 160 dollars to $190,000 of your money went into the making of this documentary administered through the Public Interest Journalism Fund. That's right, one hundred and sixty to one hundred and ninety thousand dollars. Now you'd think for that you get an original title, but even the title "Fire and Fury" isn't. "Fire and Fury" is um, they've nicked that title from a book about to be published in the United States and here, which is a critique of the Trump administration. And that book is due to hit bookshelves in New Zealand pretty soon. So for a start. The very title of this so-called documentary or piece of journalism um, seeks to associate the subject matter with Trumpism, even though that's a different country in a different democratic uh, system. But what Fire and Fury is, is basically a diatribe painting everyone who went to the protest at Parliament, the thousands and thousands of people who went there, as Nazis. Yep, that's fundamentally the premise. And look, it quite rightly says like people like Philip Alps are neo-Nazis and this guy Damien Demet is a nasty neo-Nazi and that Chantel Baker and Counterspin talk a whole lot of rubbish. That's easy. Anyone with half a brain can tell that. But it then goes on using questionable journalistic devices, dramatic music and simplistic logic to paint everyone who was at the parliamentary protest as a homicidal Nazi. It provides no balance in what was a rather chaotic and hard to put your finger on protest, but it spends a lot of time showing the worst of that protest the worst of the behaviour from the most extreme small elements of that protest. And heaven forfend, it shows people being nasty to Paula Penfold and her camera crew. And Paula Penfold looks visibly shocked that people aren't prepared to kiss the hem of her designer dress as she imposes her white middle-class woke values on people who were clearly fed up for a number of reasons and decided to go to Parliament. So it presents, I think, a totally biased view of the protest and makes no attempt, uh, fire and fury, no attempt to actually delve deeper into what went on. It continues the narrative propagated by Trevor Mallard and Jacinda Ardern and others that the people there were trying to overthrow the government and it was almost as bad as the capital riots. Now, it wasn't. There were some idiot groups there who thought that that was what it was about, but I still don't think we really know what that parliamentary protest really represented. But what it did represent clearly was a threat to the middle-class woke smugness of journalists like Paula Penfold, in my opinion which I'm allowed to express. Interesting to note too, that the Fire and Fury documentary didn't talk to any of the people it was calling Nazis, right? It didn't give them a right of reply. It exa absolutely extracted the Michael out of two elderly protesters um, and set them up basically um, and it used Kate Hanna from the Disinformation Project. Now, we have for weeks, haven't we been, more than a month, 
We have been trying to get anyone from the Disinformation Project to come in front on this program and tell us who they are and how they work and who funds them and who they're responsible to. And they have found every, Kate Hanna in particular, has been rather personally rude to me and they've failed to front despite us sending um, written lists of the questions we want or the areas we want to cover. And I know why they won't talk to me, because they might get asked a question that they don't want to answer. We might find the truth is that the disinformation project is basically a stalking horse for the woke left. Uh, there was some useful information in the Fire and Fury documentary. An interview with Rebecca Kitteridge, who was the head of our spying agencies and internal security agencies, was in some ways revealing, though I suspect heavily edited and misused for dramatic effect. Rebecca Kitteridge says there are about 40 or 50 individuals in New Zealand who our security forces are monitoring because they might actually put into action violent um, act terrorist or domestic terrorist kind of action, 40 or 50 people. But in terms of real capability for them to do anything, pretty low. Um, but of course, that was put in the context of all, everyone on Parliament's lawn was a Nazi. It was basically the story that Paula Penfold was, was trying to tell. All right, so apart from the Rebecca Kittlewood stuff, what are the facts? Oh, there's a thing called QAnon. People say silly things on the internet and we don't like it, basically, was what the documentary said. It also suggested or used computer graphics to suggest there were massive digital billboards in the streets of Auckland of people like Philip Alps and Chantel Baker talking to the New Zealand public, which, of course, is completely untrue. We didn't have any real an analysis of the online numbers or following of groups like Voices for Freedom. And it lacked almost entirely in facts. It was all about emotion and propaganda. And of course, it set everyone up to say, we'll be called propagandists. Paula Penfold saying, of course, we're gonna be called propagandists. And this woman, Kate Hanna, who accuses everyone of being in their own bubble or their own echo chamber and won't come and talk to me, um, they said, oh, all this alt media. So it was just, it was as bad as Counterspin. Uh, fire and Fury was itself as polarised and polarising as what they were criticising. And it made no attempt to find a middle ground or ask deeper and more fundamental questions about what is happening in our society. But I guess because they were getting paid by the government and its friends, they were never going to do that. They were never going to be real journalists. They become propagandists. Now, I want to say right now to Kate Hanna, to Paula Penfold, to Terence Taylor, you are welcome to come and represent your views on the platform at any time. I am not running an echo chamber here. You are welcome to come and argue your point, but I guess that's a lot more difficult than getting taxpayers' coin sitting in your echo chamber and then propagandising to the wider New Zealand public, isn't it? So the invitation stands to the makers of fire and fury. I had an interesting Twitter exchange yesterday with someone who I respect and have some fun with on Twitter, and he said, oh, it's called fire and fury because there was fire and there was fury. At the, at, the, at the protest. Yeah, the last day there was fire. A few other days there was a bit of fury. But as I said on Twitter, I said, what I saw was a whole lot of people dancing, smoking dope probably, and just doing hippie stuff. But I guess, you know, you know, mung beans and, you know, chill out wasn't such a, a sexy documentary name, was it? Um... So I think a great disservice done to public interest journalism by Fire and Fury, but you should watch it. You should watch it to know if you are someone who steps at all outside the mainstream, how you are going to be painted. It also says people who are Nazis use the word freedom. 
So I suppose maybe Paula Penfold thinks I'm a Nazi. Well, I'm not, Paula. I'm a journalist. You used to be too. And if you want to come on and talk about this, my door is open. You didn't, in your documentary, you and Terence, go and talk to anyone who was going to disagree with you. The only people from the other side of the argument that you talked to were two women in their 60s that you deliberately made look like idiots. Right? That's what you did. That was your noble, brave attempt at impartiality.